Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for part five in a 14-part series as we meander through Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This episode is on chapters 10, 11, and 12, so let's get into the breakdown of things in chapter 10. Luna Lovegood happens, and Harry sees some horsies. Chapter 11, Hagrid is missing. The Sorting Hat spreads fake news, and predictably, the Umbridge Lady is the new data professor. Also, Ron abuses power. Chapter 12, we have class with Umbridge, and Harry gets detention. Now again, um, I am trying to stay away from spoilers, but you are free to discuss spoilers in the section below. However, if you are making a comment that you wish me to see, uh, simply start that comment with my name, A-D-R-I-A-N, in caps, and I will get back to you. Uh, but getting into these chapters themselves, you know, through the history of Harry Potter on this channel, I've gotten a lot of crap for saying that old J.K. fat shames. Um, people say all the time that it's just because uh, it's Dudley, or it's because Harry is not necessarily the protagonist which we should long to be as often is deployed in children's literature but is someone who is still growing or simply that these things are not actually happening at all and perhaps i'm wrong perhaps these things are not happening and to further that evidential claim we have a quote from page 188 which reads as such and this is from a character hermione who I think we are supposed to like and want to emulate in certain ways. And that complete cow, Pansy Parkinson, said Hermione viciously, how she got to be prefect when she's thicker than a concussed troll. Never mind, I'm going to take the win on this one. You can congratulate me in the comments section. Um, page 192 we have this quote, which I found pretty interesting. Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, denied that he had any plans to take over running the Wizarding, the Wizarding Bank, Gringotts, when he was elected Minister of Magic five years ago. Fudge has always insisted that he wants nothing more than to cooperate peacefully with the Guardians of our Gold. But does he? Sources close to the Minister have recently disclosed that Fudge's dearest ambition is to seize control of the Goblin Gold supplies and that will then that he will not hesitate to use force if need be this paints fudge as an imperialist um <clears throat> and seeing as this book was written in 2003 when much of the goings on in iraq were uh heating up were really getting underway were devastating things on a world scale uh and there was a lot of guilt on the liberal sides in both the United States and uh, the United Kingdom, uh, from what I understand at least, on, and this was a global scale event, so this is something that obviously she would have been mindful of. But it is very reminiscent, this quote of um, Western countries going into Iraq and looking for oil, uh, which is something just to play with as we go through this series, which is only this book and one more. Is that right? Um, page 224 of the fifth book, we get reacquainted with our token black character and our token Asian characters. Way to go with representation, JK. Um, and on page 237 and 238, a very small quote, but something worth looking at. If I can get there. Neville, who immediately embarked on a long-winded explanation of a nightmare involving a pair of giant scissors wearing his grandmother's best hat. Freud would like a word with you. But, as far as I can see, here's the crux of these chapters. Um, it can be signified by an occurrence from chapter 11, which was Harry seeing the horsies. Obviously, this is not so simple an occurrence, it marks a change in the way the Potter boy sees things. But let's take a step back. There are also two other characters uh, whose, perfect, whose perspectives have changed as well, those being Hermione and Ron. 
They are prefects who are literally charged with the watching of other students. All of these characters with their new way of looking at things uh, try to use their own observations uh, to shape the actions of others. This is, they are looking to send their own vibrations, their own waves, out into the universe. This is to say that Harry, Ron, and Hermione are becoming alpha characters. Not simply central characters, but alpha characters. We are forced to recognize the way that Harry has stopped being such a passive protagonist and has started blowing up on people. Uh, need we remember the uh, happening in his room when one of his former roommates now observed the Harry Potter situation and left being his roommate. Uh, I have here the Wikipedia article. As we all know, Wikipedia is one of the most reliable sources in the history of Everdom. This on social animals and alpha. In studies of social animals, the highest ranking individual is sometimes designated as the alpha. Pardon me. Males, females, or both can be alphas depending on the species. Where one male and one female fulfill this role together, they are sometimes referred to as the alpha pair. Other animals in the same social group may exhibit deference or other species specific subordinate behaviors towards the alpha or alphas. Alpha animals usually gain preferential access to food and other desirable items or activities, through the extent of this, though the extent of this varies widely between species. Male or female alphas may gain preferential access to sex or mates. In some species, only alpha or alpha pairs reproduce. Alphas may achieve this status by superior physical strength and aggression, which we have noticed many times from Harry Potter, or in this book, or through social efforts and building alliances within the group. That sounds a lot like Hermione, does it not? The individual with alpha status sometimes changes. Often, though, a fight between a dominant and a subordinate animal. Often through the fight between a dominant and subordinate animal. These fights are often to the death, depending on the animal. This bit about preferential treatment and access to commodities is important. This is important for many reasons, but the preferential treatment does not come for free. And in fact, the rest of the, the, rest of the pack is not simply offering this up. These preferential treatments come with expectations. And we have noticed that all of these characters, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, are getting preferential treatment throughout this series. Uh, the expectation on the alphas is that when the rival tribe approaches in the time of reckoning, our alphas must be strong. Are we gearing up towards a rival pack approaching? It seems to be that way, but we also have had no reason thus far to have followed mainly Ron as an alpha individual. Now, since Harry is the main character and Hermione has been shown to be a leader in many ways, also someone who is intellectually curious, which is a form of alphadom uh, in the human species, Ron getting this sudden title of prefect is very interesting. So our question for the week, if you care to answer it, we talked about passions recently, and one of the alpha tendencies is aggression. What is one aggression you could assume in your field of passion in order to grab more alpha points for yourself? For me personally, that would be submissions um, of my writing to publications. So I hope to hear from you in the comments section below. I'm sorry that this was such a short episode, but I think that from time to time that will be necessary despite the fact that the chapters themselves seem to be getting longer and longer. I hope to hear from you in the comments section, and as always, I hope that you come back for part six as we meander through such a boring tale.
someone is texting me? Impossible.